Hello, Nidorinars and Nidorinos. I'm King Nidor, and today we're coming in from Medali City. But as we're about to get into the action, let's quickly send it over to our tail of the tape, as it is the Medali Aethers hosting the Montana Vera Silks, and the Silks coming in in third place. If they get a victory here to kick off round 14, they're going to move themselves on to the top of the leaderboard. But the Medali Aethers are sitting in a leader's eight position, and they do want to try and move themselves up into contention because they are not out of the run to move themselves into the Elite Four. So, with that said, let us know in the comments below who you think going to win this matchup. Will it be the flying types? Will it be the ghost types? Let's go! Three, two, one, go! But Honchko with that speed control immediately is going to set up for a sky attack as it is joined by Corviknight in its shiny form on the side of the Medallia Aethers. But it is Sinister with Skeletor on the side of the Silks and immediately we get the fusion flare from Sinister onto Corviknight. Super effective, doing massive damage but Corviknight is going to respond with the Moon Blast immediately going for that Ghost Grass type. Skeletor going for its first move of the matchup. Goes with the Brick Break, capitalizing on that part dark typing of Honchkrow and gets the critical hit but Honchkrow responds with a massive sky attack doing huge damage there to Skeletor as we get the seismic toss, that consistent damage putting Corviknight into knockout range thanks to Sinister, who responds with the payback, putting Sinister into knockout range with that super effective move as Skeletor has flinched. This allows Honchko to go for the take heart instead of going for the easy elimination. It is going to boost its special attack as well as its special defense. And this opens the door for Sinister to try and capitalize. Going with the Water Shuriken, this multi hit move, getting a critical hit on that first one as well. So many critical plays already coming into this matchup, but it only gets two connections, and this allows Corviknight to go with the rest. Already taken so much damage. This is a very clever play because although it is going to put itself to sleep, it is going to get itself back to full strength. It just needs to wake itself up very quickly as Skeletor is going to go for the Fury Swipes. More multi hit moves onto Hunch Pro here, putting it into knockout range with that second connection, but yet again, only hitting two times. This allows Hunch Pro to go for the slack off, so it's also going to restore its health, not wanting to be in knockout range. However, Sinister is going to respond with the Shelter, not going on the offensive. Instead, it is going to boost that physical defense. It's already base 106, sorry, as Corviknight is still fast asleep on the field. Here, Skeletor looking to capitalize. Goes for the Shadow Punch. Gets a really good connection for a not very effective move onto Honchkrow, who does respond with the Burning Jealousy, connecting with both Ghost Types, but it is super effective onto Sinister, getting the elimination, putting the Medallia Actors in front early on in this matchup. As Corviknight needs to wake up, however, first that Moxie Boost does come into play for Honchkrow. And Corviknight is still fast asleep on the field. This allows Skeletor to respond with the Poison Bang. Getting a good connection there onto Honchkrow as out comes Baskogen for the Montana Vera Silvers. Immediately going for the Baton Pass, not wanting to come out onto the field yet. It is going to go back to the bench. In its place, it is going to be Dustmar exerting that pressure over the Medaliathers, and they are feeling it at this point in the season. Honchkrow, however, with the Feather Dance not capitalizing on that boosted attack or boosted special attack, instead, it's going to lower that physical attack of Skeletor a great deal. And Corviknight has awoken, and it immediately goes with the Cotton Spore onto the Ghost Types, lowering their speed a great deal. However, the Medaliathers already have full speed control as Skeletor responds with the Headbutt, doing very very little damage with that not very effective move to Corviknight, allowing the Bullet Seed in response from Honchkrow. That first connection puts Skeletor into knockout range, but it only gets two with that multi-hit move as well. These Pokemon need to get more than two connections as we get the Rising Voltage from Corviknight onto Dustmite doing very little damage, and Skeletor is going to respond with the Bitter Blade, trying to level the playing field, and it is successful, taking that Moxie Boosted Punchcrow out of this matchup, and they did not want to have to deal with a Moxie Boosted Pokemon, did the Montana Vera Silks. Punchcrow taken out of this matchup, and Dustmite looking to follow it up, goes with the Moon Blast on the Corviknight, resisting yet another move as out comes Gyarados. Speaking of Moxie ability Pokemon, it immediately goes for the Wood Hammer, trying to get the elimination. However, Skeletor is able to hang on from that not very effective move, and there is the recoil damage for Gyarados as Corviknight follows it up by setting up a, an electric terrain, which I do not think the Medallion Aethers want to be a part of. They are weak to those electric type moves. Skeletor does respond as well with that Lash out, 
on to Gyarados, not doing much damage, however, and Dustin White also with that stomp yet again, resisted by Corviknight, which allows Gyarados to try and capitalize, going for the mystical power, and this time it will finish off Skaladesh, and as we said, it has got that Moxie ability, so it will get that boost, but also gets the special attack boost as it eliminates Skaladesh there, and there is that Moxie being activated, so both the attack and special attack have been boosted, and Corviknight follows it up with the close combat, but it phases straight through Dustin White, allowing Dustin White to try and capitalize here, responding with the Lunar Dance. That, I would not call it capitalizing, taking itself out of the matchup, practically giving the Medallion Aether a huge play, and it is going to be Shandalua coming out for the Montana Verisilves, as Basque Legion does return to the field, and it is going to take the effects of that Lunar Dance, but it was already at full strength, so it doesn't really matter, and Gyarados with the Thunder Punch going for Shandalua, massive damage, but it would have been super effective onto Basque Legion, and it's left with that burn, thanks to the Flame Body ability of Shandalua, who does respond with the Heart Swap. On to Corviknight here, switching all the stat changes between the two, and Basque Legion does follow it up with the Incinerate, burning up those Leopard Berries of the Medalliathus, also getting in that super effective damage on to Corviknight as well. Not very effective on Gyarados as Corviknight with the Vault Switch. This is going to be super effective on the Basque Legion. Corviknight having a rest that's been in since the start of this matchup, it goes back to the bench and out in its place comes Dragonite onto the field as that burn is starting to do that damage to Gyarados as it is going to have its attack stat cut into as well, but it is going to go with the Calm Mind trying to maintain its composure, it is going to boost those special stats already getting a special attack boost earlier on, it's getting a special defense boost here now as well with that special attack. We get the Inferno from Dragonite on to Chandelure, not very effective, and this allows Chandelure to respond with the Dragon Pulse. It should have gone for Dragonite, but instead gets a critical hit onto Gyarados for some great damage. Basque Legion looking to follow up, goes for the Trop Kick, goes for Dragonite instead, does very, very little damage, but it does lower that physical attack. That's base 134. As that burn is going to put Gyarados into knockout range, who does go for the poison jab, trying to finish off Chandelure, not very effective, does put it into knockout range, Dragonite could finish it off, goes for the double kick, but it phases straight through Basque Legion, it is immune, so there's Chandelure to go for the Moonlight, very intelligently it is going to restore its health, as the Montana Verisilves are at a disadvantage at the moment, and we get the Misty Explosion! Basque Legion is going to take itself out of this matchup, but it doesn't take out anybody else. It's not very effective on Chandelure, but it still didn't do that much damage to Dragonite, even though it is super effective on. And there's only two Pokemon remaining for the Sylphs, as that burn could eliminate Gyarados, but it's still holding on. There's only been one elimination from the Medalliathus, as that electricity does disappear from the field. Last Pokemon for the Sylphs, it's going to be Dragapult, and with that speed adventure, it immediately goes for the Frenzy Plant onto Gyarados, resisting yet another move and this allows Gyarados to try and capitalize going for the poltergeist this is going to be super effective it's going to go for Chandelure it should get the elimination and then it does with the super effective move Dragapult is all by itself after that critical hit take Chandelure out of this matchup Dragonite looking to follow up there is that moxie boost for Gyarados but it has that burn so it's going to be taken down it's the smackdown in his laid from Dragonite onto Dragapult and there is Gyarados Finally succumbing to the effects of that burn. We know Corviknight will be coming back out onto the field in all that shiny glory here. The Dragapult has to recharge. And this opens the door for Ga uh, Dragonite sorry, to try and capitalize going with the Feather Dance. But that clear body ability will prevent Dragapult's stats from being lowered. Corviknight with the Slam will phase straight through Dragapult. Dragapult has to try and take down four flying type Pokemon. And it is going to go for the Growl trying to lower those physical attacks of both Dragonite, but that Mirror Armor ability does send it back to Dragapult from Corviknight, but it's got that clear body as the Tri-Attack is going to go straight through Dragapult from Dragonite as well as Corviknight. With the Psycho Cut, they're finally getting some damage on the Dragapult here, who does respond with the Ice Punch. Get some really good damage there, and it's frozen Corviknight. Corviknight is frozen solid in midair. Gyarados, uh, sorry. Gyarados inspiring Dragonite here to go for the Poltergeist onto Dragapult. Super effective, but Dragapult is able to hang on. It is in knockout range. However, Corviknight is still frozen solid. Dragapult could capitalize. It goes for the Diagro onto Dragonite here, and it's left it with that Paralysis. It's going to slow it down. Not that that really matters for Dragapult, but it could make Dragonite unable to move as 
Corviknight is still frozen solid, and Dragonite cannot move. This is great for Dragapult. It could capitalize here if it can get an elimination. It is going to go for the Bulldoze, but this will not work on the flying types. They are immune, even being frozen solid in mid-air for Corviknight. Still immune to ground type moves as Dragonite is going to go for the Bone Rush, but that's going to be avoided by Dragapult. Quickly evading that to respond with the fake out, but unfortunately that is going to fail. And Corviknight still frozen solid. No idea what is going on on the field right now. And Dragonite yet again unable to move because of its paralysis. Dragapult needs to get an elimination here. It goes for the Fire Spin, but that's also going to be avoided by the frozen solid Corviknight. I don't know how it avoided that move, but Dragonite looking to do its part is going to go for the active pressure, trying to help out its frozen comrade here, boosting its special attack a great deal as Dragapult is going to go for the sludge bomb on the Dragonite and gets the elimination. This is what Dragapult needs to do. It has three more Pokemon to contend with. Corviknight still frozen solid on this field as out comes Roaring Moon for the Medaliators and this is a very fast Pokemon but it is still nowhere near as quick as Dragapult as it is in Tarasca Drafty taking on that flying typing of the Medaliators here and its eyes are locked on to Dragapult it needs to go for something big but first Dragapult is looking to go for the Electro Ball this will be super effective gets in some really good damage there as well, but Roaring Moon is going to respond, and it's going to ride that Surf Take. No, it doesn't. Dragapult holds on. What is going on? It's still in this matchup, and Corviknight is still frozen solid as Dragapult with the Cross Poison still focusing in on to Roaring Moon. Gets the critical hit and leaves it with that Poison status condition. This is what it needs. It could work its way back into this. Roaring Moon, however, needs to go on the offensive. Goes for the Muddy Water. The Surf didn't do it, but the Muddy Water will. Even though it's not very effective, it's effective enough to get Get the Medali Aethers, the victory over the Montana Vera Sylphs. Dragapult did everything it could to stay around in this matchup, and Corviknight's still frozen solid. I don't even know if it knows the Medali Aethers one, but with that, the Aethers have moved themselves up into ninth place, and next round, they're going up against the Vilestone Breakers, whereas the Montana Vera Sylphs do stay in third place, but in our haunting matchup this season, next round, they are going up against the Spike Moth Rockets, but until then, Nidorinos, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. And let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field and if you enjoyed what you saw please leave a like share subscribe but more importantly always remember you are awesome and i'll see you when you see me